In the previous video, we learned about cycle notation for permutations, and it's a much more preferred way of representing permutations in this abstract algebra setting. Now, products of permutations can easily be computed using this cycle notation, much easier than we were doing it before with that two-row tableaus. So, for example, suppose we have two cycles, say sigma tau, much like the two examples you see right here. So we have two cycles, sigma is one, three, five, two, and tau is two, five, six. Uh, so we can think of these as two cycles that live inside of the group S6. We first can compute uh, sigma of x, or I guess in this case, um, tau would come first. So what if we, if we want to compute something like sigma tau of say, say two, what, what does that mean in this situation? Well, sigma tau of two, what you would do is you would say, well, it's tau sends two to five. So you, this would become sigma of five. And then five sends two, or sends sigma sends five back to two. And so what we see here is that sigma tau of two would actually fix two. And that's what's illustrated right here. Tau sends sigma, or tau sends two to five, and sigma sends five back to two. And so composition, you just read both cycles the way they are, right next to each other, reading right to left, because again, the, the function on the right will interact with the element first. So if we're trying to compute this thing, we might be like, okay, what happens to one? Well, one is sent to one by tau. So notice here in tau, you don't see a one. The fact that you don't see one means one is fixed. Tau doesn't do anything to one. So tau sends one to one. Then sigma will send one to three. And so then the compositum will give that uh, tau sigma, excuse me, sigma tau will send one to three. And so then we record that right here. So sigma tau sends one to three. Well, now what does sigma tau do to three? Well, tau will send three to three because again, we don't see three here. So three is fixed by it. Then in this situation, sigma sends three to five. So then the composite will be that sigma tau sends three to five. So we then record that right here. What happens to five? Well, now in this situation, tau sends five to six and sigma doesn't do anything to six. So it leaves it fixed. So then the composite will send five to six right here. Nextly, tau sends six to two. We see that right here. And then sigma will send two to one, which we see right there. So the composite will send six to one, like so. And then as one was the first number that started this cycle, we actually erase it and put a left parenthesis. Like we already computed, two will send, be sent to itself. And the same thing happens to four, right? Tau doesn't do anything to four, nor does sigma. So four is left fixed. And so the product of this four cycle by a three cycle is in fact a four cycle. And so this is what we do in general, that we just kind of list the elements one by one and say it out loud if you need to. So for example, if we switch up the order here, take tau times sigma this time, so tau comes first. If we want to compute the cycle containing one, we're like, okay, sigma sends one to three. And then th tau sends three back to three, so the composite would be three. Three is sent to five by sigma. Five goes to six by tau, so three is going to go to six. Six is left fixed by sigma. Tau sends six to two, so the composite will be, whoops, two. Next, sigma will send two to one, and tau will do nothing to one. So we get back a one. That starts the cycle all over again, so we close it off. Um, then the next number we haven't used yet would be a four. What happens to four? Four, does, sigma doesn't do anything to four, neither does tau. So that would just be a one cycle. We're just going to erase that. Then the next one will be five, which admittedly, that's the last element, so it has to be a one cycle. But if you go through the argument here, Sigma sends five to two and tau sends two to five. So that's a one cycle. So we're just gonna erase it. And we see that tau sigma is likewise a four cycle. But one thing to notice here is that this is not the same four cycle. Sigma tau is one, three, five, six and tau sigma is one, three, six, two. This is an example that permutation multiplication is non-commutative. Uh, we don't anticipate that switching up the order of permutations will give us the same result. It's actually very rare when permutations will commute with each other. 
Uh, let's do another example of this, a little bit more complicated. So we talked about multiplying cycles together, but what if we just take general permutations that are not necessarily cycles? Well, what we saw earlier in the previous video is that every permutation can be written as a product of disjoint cycles. So if we take a four cycle like one, six, one, six, two, four, and then a two, three cycle, one, three, and four, five, six, then their product will actually be a product of a four cycle, a two cycle, and a three cycle. And we just go through all three pieces together. So if we ask what happens to one, moving right to left, the first cycle doesn't do anything to one. The next one goes to three. So this would send one to three. And then the last cycle doesn't do anything to three. So the composite would be one goes to three. The next step, well, where does three go? Well, the first one doesn't have a three. The second one will send three to one. And then the last one will send one to six. So the composite will be that three goes to six. How about the next one? Well, the first cycle again, going right to left, six goes to four. This doesn't have a four, four goes to one. And so this then closes up the cycle, we get a three cycle. Next, we'll do the cycle with a two. This doesn't have a two, this doesn't have a two, two goes to four. So the composite will be a four. Uh, then we do four, four goes to five. This doesn't have a five, this doesn't have a five. So we then record a five, which then that should, that should finish it up for us because I think we've done all six elements. But if you have any doubts, just go through it again. Five goes to six, this doesn't have a six. Six goes to two, so that closes up the cycle. So the product of sigma tau right here is, uh, is a three, three cycle, one, three, six, and two, four, five that we see here on the screen. Let's do another example here. Let's do tau sigma. So we're just gonna switch things around here. So this time sigma comes on the right and then tau comes on the left. We'll compute the product the same way. So we'll do one, one goes to six, six goes to four. This doesn't have a four. So then we record a four. Four goes to one. This doesn't have a one. One goes to three. So we end up with a three. Uh, and the next one we're gonna get is three. This doesn't have a three. This doesn't have a three. Three goes to one. That closes the cycle. We'll start the next cycle with a two. Two goes to four. Four goes to five. This doesn't have a five. So we record five. The next one we're gonna have is five. This doesn't have a five. Five goes to six. This doesn't have a six. So we record six. That's all six elements, so that should finish it up. But again, for due diligence here, if we wanna finish it up to make sure we made no errors, six goes to two. This doesn't have a two, this doesn't have a two. So then we finish it up. So we see that tau sigma is the three, three cycle, one, four, three, and two, five, six. Notice again, this is not the same element as one, three, six, and two, four, five. I mean, you'll notice that they're both three, three cycles, which they have the same cycle structure, but Sigma tau is not equal to tau, to tau sigma. Again, this is a non-commutative, but this idea of cycle structure is something we'll come back to, that although the elements don't commute with each other, their cycle structure is preserved even when you commute things. Now, I do wanna, of course, tell us that just because most permutations don't commute doesn't mean that there's never commutation. Sometimes they do commute. Take, for example, the permutations pi, which will be one, two, three, and rho is the three cycle, four, five, six. So notice here that if we were to do this, if you take sig, uh, if you take pi times rho, you get something like this. But what happens when you go through the elements, right? If you go through the elements, you'll end up with, okay, let's see one, this doesn't have a one, one goes to two, so the, the product is one and two. Uh, next, two, let's see, this doesn't have a two, two goes to three, so we get a three. Uh, then the next one, this doesn't have a three, three goes to one. So we close off that cycle, then start the next cycle, four. Four goes to five, this doesn't have a five. Uh, then five goes to six, this doesn't have a six. And then that's the last one, so we close it off. It's wait, wait a second, when I took the product of these two guys, I just ended up with the exact same thing I had before, interesting. All right, well, what about the other side? I don't need to write that on the screen twice. What about this one right here? So if we do one goes to two, uh, this doesn't have a two. Then we'll do two goes to three, this doesn't have a three. Then we get three goes to one, this doesn't have a one. Uh, so that closes up the cycle, start another one, four. This doesn't have a four, four goes to five. Uh, this doesn't have a five, five goes to six. And that'll close it up. But that's just this guy again, right? Um, so 
these two per, these two three cycles actually commute with each other. And if you're kind of following off the argument there, the main reason that we are able to commute with each other is that these two cycles are in fact disjoint. As I was going through the cycle constructions, I kept on being like, oh, this cycle doesn't involve that element. This doesn't use that one. This doesn't use that one. That happened every single time. And so what we actually see in greater generality is that if you have two, two disjoint cycles in your permutation group, then disjoint cycles always commute with each other. And this is actually part of the unique factorization of permutations and cycle notation. The ordering of the cycles doesn't matter because they actually commute with each other. And we're gonna prove this fact right here. So imagine we have two cycles. Sigma, uh, let's say it's the cycle containing elements a1, a2 up to ak, it has a length k. Then say that tau is the cycle b1, b2 up to bl. I do not claim that k and l are the same lengths. These could be different lengths. So what we wanna do is we need to show that sigma tau equals tau sigma. Now these are permutations and as such, they are functions. How do you show that two functions are equal to each other? Well, you pick an arbitrary element of its domain and then argue that the images are the same. So we have to prove that sigma tau equals x, or sorry, sigma tau of x equals tau sigma of x. If you choose x to be an arbitrary element of the domain and argue that the images are equal, this will actually prove that the assignment by the two functions is the same. And if the assignments are the same, then the functions are the same, because after all, functions just a relationship. So in this direction, we're gonna choose an arbitrary element x and argue that sigma tau and tau sigma do the same thing to x. Now there's a couple of possibilities, right? The first possibility is that x could be the could be an element ai that is involved in, in the permutation sigma. So we can still see it on the screen right here. Now because by assumption, Sigma and tau are disjoint cycles. So if x is equal to a1, then x can't equal any of the bj's. Therefore, tau will do nothing to sigma. It'll be a fixed element. And so then we see that if you take, if you take sigma tau of x, well, because x is a1, tau won't do anything to it. So this will just become sigma of a, ai. And then sigma will send that to ai plus one, where that number i plus one will, will, will reduce mod k. So like if if i was k, then i plus one we just mean by we just mean one in that situation. So it'll cycle around. Okay, so that's what sigma tau of x is. But on the other hand, if we take tau sigma of x, well x is ai, which sigma what does it do to ai? It sends it to ai plus one. But tau doesn't do anything to an a. Um, it only does stuff to B, so we end up with AI plus one. So it does the same thing. If, if X was equal to AI, well, what if X was equal to BJ? Well, because if X is equal to BJ, again, if the cycles are disjoint, Sigma won't do anything to a B, but then Tau will just progress uh, BJ to the next one, BJ plus one, reducing, of course, the index mod L. And so it's the exact same type of argument you're going to get as we saw just a moment ago. Well, what if X is neither A nor B? Because those are only possibilities because A and B are disjoint. In that case, both Sigma will leave X fixed because it's not an A and Tau will also leave X fixed because it's not a B. And so you end up seeing that Sigma Tau of X just becomes Sigma of X, which is an X, which is the same thing as sig Tau Sigma of X, which is a Tau of X, which is an X. And so in all three possibilities, we see that sigma tau of x equals tau sigma of x. Therefore, because the function agrees for every element of the domain, the two functions are equal to each other. This proves that disjoint cycles will commute with each other. And that's, that's not to say those are the only times that permutations uh, commute with each other. Like, for example, if you take 1, 2, 3, and you times that by one, three, two in this situation. These are not disjoint cycles, but I would claim that they commute with each other because what happens is one goes to three, three goes to one, so one is fixed. Uh, two goes to one, one goes to two, so two is fixed. And then in this case, we also have the three goes to two and two goes to three. So this is actually the identity. Uh, that's because one, two, three and one, three, two are uh, permutation inverses of each other. But if we switch this thing around, 
you're going to see the same thing happening. One goes to two, two goes to one, so one's fixed. Two goes to three, three goes to two, so two is fixed. And then three goes to one, one goes to three, so three is fixed. These are, this is also the identity. So in this situation, these things are not disjoint cycles. They can commute. So there is some commutation in the symmetric group. We can guarantee it for, uh, for disjoint cycles, but we don't anticipate it in general. But the cycle notation is very, very useful, nonetheless, in helping us compute the product of permutations.